What's up guys, I'm Newbie Dave and today we're making an iron farm. Let's get started. So how's it going everybody? The villagers that we found last time are safe and secure in their little dirt dome down here and it is time to put them to work. That's right, we are building an iron farm. Now I was kind of torn about whether or not I even wanted to do this build in this series because with the new changes to iron ore in 1.17 you can now fortune iron, which is super exciting. I was really, really stoked about that. And so I, I kind of wanted to just mine all my iron and fortune it and get tons and tons of iron that way. So I feel a little, I don't know, cheaty by making an iron farm and just completely ignoring the fact that you can fortune iron now. But it's such a useful build. And if it was just an iron farm, I might put it off. But I've got big, big plans for this build. And today it's just going to be an iron farm, but in the next couple of episodes, we're going to take it even further. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this thing out. Now this is going to require lots and lots of resources. I'm mainly going to be using stone bricks for the floors uh, and a little bit of cobble deep slate, a little bit of uh, cobblestone, some leaves, some oak fences. Yeah, pretty much everything you see in here. And then I've got some additional stuff that we're going to need to actually make this thing work. Some beds, some hoppers. Uh, we're going to use the farmer villagers to breed all the villagers that we need. So we're going to need lots and lots of food for that. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, I should probably point out, uh, I have carrots now. <laughs> That's something that happened between episodes. Uh, last episode, we went exploring and we found some villagers, which we need to do this build. But the three, I think, villages? Yeah. Yeah, I think we found three villages. Maybe. I don't remember. The, the villages that we found, they... It was hard finding these villagers, you guys. And none of the villages that we found had any carrots or potatoes or beetroots or anything. So between episodes, I did a little bit more exploring and I found a village, eh, maybe a thousand blocks or so that way-ish that had all these different crops. So brought those back. I've been uh, growing those. And so that's what we're going to use to be breeding our villagers today. I used to think it was really important that these iron farms be completely contained within one chunk in order for them to work. As it turns out, that's not entirely true. It's still useful to build them as much as possible within a single chunk, but that's more for how the game simulates them than how it making it work correctly. All that means is if you know your iron farm is half in one chunk and half in another chunk, and you move really far away and like one of the chunks is loaded but another one's not then you're just gonna get like significantly reduced yields from the thing, but it's still gonna work. All right, so let's get started with this thing. Uh, to get started, I'm going to put down some hoppers in the middle. This is where the kill chamber is eventually going to be. And you need a three by three pattern of hoppers, and these are gonna go into a double chest. I'm actually gonna put my double chest out a little ways and have one more hopper going into it. And that will make sense once I build the rest of the stuff around that. So we want all nine of these hoppers going into that one. So just crouch down and uh, build all these hoppers that they're pointing into one another. And then everything that falls into this three by three space should end up in this chest, just like that. Perfect. All right, next we need to put in a ground around this or a floor around this. Eventually I want to do a nice floor out of like stone or deep slate or something. But for now I'm just going to use dirt because we're going to use this uh, both as an iron farm and initially as a villager breeder. I'm going to breed up the 20 villagers that we need to make the iron farm work from the two villagers that we've got in our little uh, dirt hut over there. And so in order to do that I need this to be basically a giant farm. So to start I'm going to go out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in every direction from the three by three hopper grid in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll do that on each side and then uh, fill this whole thing in. On this front side, be sure to measure from the three by three hoppers, not from the chest. So starting here, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just like that. So I'm gonna fill this whole thing in with dirt and then we'll move on. 
Now this is a slightly different design than the one that I used in season one. What I built in season one, it was just straight up Silent Whispers Iron Farm design. It was great, it worked exactly as advertised. I had no issues with it. But there were two things about the farm that I kind of wasn't happy with that I wanted to try to change. And they're just personal issues. It was nothing wrong with Silent Whisperer's design. Uh, the first thing was, in order for his design to work properly, it had to be built either, well, it had to be kind of tall. It, it was two different floors and the kill chamber had to be below all that. And so you either had to build this thing kind of floating up in the sky or you had to build it sunken down to the ground and then like dig down into the kill chamber to get the iron out of it. And I didn't really like either of those options very much. The other issue that I had with it was it was really, really hard to get 20 villagers into these four tiny little one by one block holes that where they were going to live. I just really struggled with that. It took so long. And at the end of the day, here's 20 villagers that are running this iron farm that you don't have access to. You can't do anything with them. You can't trade with them. You can't get anything from them. It just felt like kind of a waste. And so I spent a lot of time kind of playing around with this build in a creative world, trying to make some modifications to address those two issues. And I think what I've come up with, I'm really happy with, I think it works really, really well. And also kind of looks a little bit better per my aesthetic, I think. All right, so here we've got our giant dirt floor with our hopper layout in the middle. So this whole thing should be, I think it's uh, 17 by 17 with the hoppers in the middle. Now coming outside of this, in the corners, we're going to put some oak logs. And for now, we'll go up four blocks. Uh, let's go five. I mean, it's eventually going to be a little bit taller, but I think four is the, the minimum that we need to start with. We're going to do this on each corner. Now be sure you go outside of the dirt platform that we just made, not on the dirt platform. And then in between all those corners, I'm going to put down some cobble, upside down cobblestone stairs like this. This is just going to be the outline of the bottom floor for this build. And I think it's going to make it look a little bit nicer than just having you know plain dirt on the outside. All right, now coming back to the hoppers in the middle, I'm going to put some slabs on top of these hoppers. So we're going to do, I'm just going to use some polished andesite in the middle. I think that looks really, really nice. And then on the outside, on the corners, I'm going to do some deep slate tile uh, blocks like this, and then some more deep slate tile slabs in between each of those. Now this step is technically optional if you wanted to. Instead, you could just build uh, a wall or glass or something all around this kill chamber so that the villagers can't get in, the iron golems can't get out. The reason I'm doing it this way is because this farm, in addition to spawning iron golems, is also going to spawn, spawn cats. And I don't know about you, but the sound of cats burning to death, it just kind of bothers me. And so uh, I, I modified this build in season one to save the cats, and I, I was really happy with that. So that's what we're going to do here. Now we're going to waterlog all of the andesite slabs in the middle. And so anything that falls down into this water will immediately be, uh, the fire on them will be put out and the cats will be spared. They're, this area is going to be open so that they can get out, but it's going to be, it's only going to be open enough that the cats can get out. The iron golems will still be stuck in there. Their heads will still be up in the lava. And so they're still going to uh, be killed by the lava, but this will spare the lives of the cats. And I don't know about you, but that just makes me feel a lot better as a human being. All right, so now we're going to take the corners of these and make them three blocks tall. There's already one block, so we're going to go up one, two on each one. And then we're going to connect uh, the tops of these so that we create this ring around the top like that. So as you can see, this gap that's left, it's too small for a person or a villager to get through. It's too small for the iron golems that will be inside to get out, but there's plenty of space for the cats to get out. And because we're using slabs, uh, well, and this is also why I wanted to extend the, the chest, move it out by one, was so that if we put this under the slabs, you wouldn't be able to open it. You know what? This is going to bother me. I'm going to go ahead and fill in that one block that I missed down there. <laughs> all right. And then last thing for the kill chamber right now, we're just going to do one more block all the way around. This is where the beds are going to go. So the beds are going to go on top of this little layer right here. And you have to have two blocks to put the beds on. 
We're going to hold off on putting the beds in until we actually get the villagers in. That way they bind to them and this is recognized as the village. All right, we're actually almost done with the bottom layer here. So next we're going to go around the cobblestone with some uh, oak fences. This is to keep the villagers in. It's also to keep any bad guys out. If you wanted, you could just do a full you know, wall out of cobblestone or deep slate or glass or the building block of your choice. Uh, for me, based on this, uh, how I'm kind of styling this thing, I really like the look of the fences. It keeps it open and so you can kind of see in and it just, I think it looks really nice. Uh, I have now trapped myself in here, so I'm going to replace two of these and we're just going to leave it open right now. And with that, it is actually time to move the villagers in. So they're in here, they're already in their boats, so all we need to do, I'm going to break their beds, I'm going to break their workstations, and then one at a time, I'm just going to row these guys over into the farm. Oh, I need to break my bed because they just bound to that, that's not going to be good. Yeah, so make sure that you have no additional beds or job sites or anything around here. I do have my stone cutter, that's okay because both of my villagers are already locked into their profession. So they're not going to bind to that. All right, so got the villagers moved in. I went ahead and replaced the fences here with some gates so I can get in and out, but the villagers can't. So we'll let them free. And now we need to get their beds up on top here. So I'm going to build myself a little staircase to get up and down. And what we're going to do is eventually we're just going to outline this entire ring up here with beds. For now, I'm just going to start with the two for these villagers. So I'll put the first one down, make sure he binds to it good and I'll put the second one down across from that one here the exact pattern that you use doesn't really matter they just need to be as close to the middle of this build as possible so I'm gonna put down two more beds so that they can go ahead and start breeding and I'm going to stop at four villagers right now because I want the first two villagers that I get to also be farmer villagers and then I'm gonna start rolling their trades so I can get right now I've got potatoes and I've got wheat I want to get the other two farmer trades of carrots and beetroot so I can trade with them to get lots of emeralds. And then we'll just open this bad boy up and let them breed up to 20 villagers. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down some water here. I will uh, put a slab on top of that and a compost bin so that these guys will bind to it and start working. And then I'm also going to go ahead and I guess I'll start, uh, yeah, I'll start breeding them first. So I'm gonna toss each of them 12 carrots. So that should be good enough to get them both to start breeding once they are you know, ready to do that. And the rest of these carrots I'm gonna plant. Once I plant these carrots, these farmer villagers, they'll just take care of the rest. They'll uh, harvest the carrots when they're fully grown. They'll plant more. The carrots that they harvest, they can then toss to other villagers to keep breeding. Oh no, he's planting them. I gave you those carrots to breed. So yeah, this step, getting the farmer villagers in here, getting them some food, getting the beds placed down, doing all the stuff that you need to to get them to start breeding, that's something you want to do ASAP on this build. Get that done as soon as possible. That's why we've already moved them in, even though the rest of this build is nowhere near complete, because this is the long pole on the project. This is the part that's gonna take the longest, is just breeding up 20 villagers. In addition to just how long it takes for them to breed and for the babies to grow up, you're going to get some nitwits. I don't remember the exact percentages, but you're gonna, with 20 villagers, you're gonna get some nitwits. And you can't have nitwits in this farm. So if the nitwits appear, you just need to remove the nitwits from the farm and using the style of your choosing and you know wait for them to breed new villagers, which is gonna take another 10 or 15 minutes. So yeah, start the breeding process as soon as possible. So I've run back to my base. I'm gonna grab some more carrots and see if we can get them breeding uh, so we can get a move on. Oh, I just heard, yeah, we got babies, all right. So this is fantastic. I am gonna go ahead and uh, make the rest of the beds and put them up there because I was just talking about how long this process takes to breed the villagers. And if I wait the 10 or 15 minutes it, wakes, it takes for these two babies to grow up and uh, make them farmers and then start breeding the rest, that's just gonna take even longer. Why would I do that to myself? And something just occurred to me. You want to block this middle section off while you're breeding your villagers. You don't want the babies to get inside and then grow into full adults and then they're stuck inside there. So let's block that off until we get all of our villagers and we're ready to like turn this thing on and then we'll unblock it. 
So I'm going to come back up on top here. I'm going to go ahead and put down the rest of the beds. And as the villagers start turning into adults, some of them will bind to the other two composters. They'll become farmer villagers. I'll just go ahead and roll their trades. And then, uh, you know, oh, see, this, this is what I didn't want happening with the baby villagers. So yeah, we'll roll the farmer's trades. As soon as we get the farmers that we like, then we can go ahead and start putting in some other job blocks because in order for the iron farm to work, you need all of your, well, not technically all, but you need like 75% of the, farm, the villagers working. And so we need to have lots and lots of job blocks in here. Alrighty, while we're waiting for our, our villagers to breed and grow up, we can go ahead and start uh, finishing the top of this thing. So on the very top here, uh, skip this bottom row of deep slate tiles that we built and we're going to go up, crouch down and start placing blocks along the beds. The beds are actually part of the upper floor. This is one of the modifications that I made to Silent Whispers design uh, to get this thing a little bit more compact. And so what we're going to be doing is we're, we're basically losing a, the bottom row of spawn area where the uh, iron golems can spawn. And so they can only spawn on the very top row. What that means is that the villagers down here, they can roam around freely. They don't have to be trapped anywhere and we can come and go, we can trade with them. And so in order to do that, this bottom section needs to be no more than three blocks tall. That's going to prevent the iron golems from spawning down here. And so uh, the beds, they need to be up there so that the villagers don't actually sleep in them. Uh, but they can't be so high up that the villagers can't bind to them. So this, uh, the height that we have them at is the perfect height for this to work. So we're going to do uh, stone bricks all the way out and we want to go out eight blocks from the center area here starting with the beds. So the beds are going to count as two. So that's one, two, three, and then we'll do four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to do this in every direction, just like we did on the bottom row, except we're going out eight now instead of seven. And uh, yeah, make sure your villagers don't get up here. <laughs> All right, so now that we've got the entire upper level uh, put in, you can see it's three blocks tall. There's enough room for you to jump, but there's not enough room for iron golems to spawn. So that's going to be perfect for our needs. You do need to keep this row of deep slate uh, around the middle because the beds are on top of that. And if you remove this or replace it with slabs or stairs or something, Surprisingly, the villagers will be able to reach their beds and if they can reach their beds, that is bad, bad news because that means that they'll actually sleep up top and when they wake up, then they'll get pushed down to the kill chamber and we don't want them in the kill chamber. Like, I feel like I don't need to explain that part. Uh, now that this whole thing is covered, make sure it is nice and lit up so you don't start getting zombies and other bad things spawning down here. All right, now going back up top. So what we want to do now, I'm going to bring the uh, corners up by, um, yeah, just one block. Okay, so in order for this thing to work properly, we have two choices. We can either, let me, uh, let me put some dirt on the back here to uh, illustrate this point or some logs that will also work. Uh, if we just put some water down now, then it's going to make a beeline for the shortest exit. So if we just put some water down now, you can see it spreads out and flows uh, all the way up to the edge of the kill chamber here. So just like that, that is perfect. That's exactly where we want it to stop. If we had made this thing just one row smaller then the water would flow down into the kill chamber and we'd have to put up a bunch of science to stop it. And because this thing's a lot shorter than uh, Silent Whispers build that I did in season one, that wouldn't really work. And so it needs to be at least eight blocks which means we need sort of a, a backstop behind this that will stop the water from flowing out of the farm. I just put down the oak logs to illustrate the point. That's not what I'm gonna be using for my backstop. So what I want to use are cobblestone stairs. Uh, this will kind of bring the top and the bottom of this build together. So we need to go out one row from uh, where you know we are right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it down a temporary block there. And I want these stairs to be on the outside. So I'll get back down on the bottom and I'll place an upside down stair there. And I'm just going to carry this all the way across, which I'm going to have to go slow because yeah, it's just, it's going to take a little bit cause I got to go slow. If you're in a bit of a hurry, the stairs are optional. This could just be any solid block and then you can go a lot faster. 
There we go. So we've made a wall around the outside of this thing that's going to keep all the water contained inside. And just to double check, I want to make sure that all of these are the right spacing from the middle so that the water stops right before it reaches the inside. Looking good. Now, you notice I left the oak uh, pillars in the corners. That is intentional. We're going to be putting water on top of these to flow from the corners down to the inside. If you take water sources all the way into a corner, they connect and they start filling in the inside with water sources. And we don't want that. We want flowing water everywhere. But if we put water up here, it's going to actually surprisingly flow in. Okay, that's that's good, but it's going to look weird. And uh, also iron golems could actually spawn on these outer walls here. Um, a lot of videos that I've seen talk about putting slabs or stairs or something on the outside. Iron golems don't seem to follow the same spawning mechanics as like literally every other mob in the game. And they can spawn on top of slabs, they can spawn on top of stairs, it's really annoying. But I have found they cannot spawn on top of leaves. So I'm going to put a row of leaves across the back here. And this is actually kind of nice because with the leaves and the cobblestone, it kind of looks like the wall that we built around our base over there. So it kind of brings these two builds together. And then to really kind of tie this back to my base, I'm just going to go ahead and put some uh, oak fences on top. I think that this looks really nice and it, it kind of gives a reason for there to be all these oak leaves on top. Otherwise, you look at it from below and you're like, why, is there, why are there oak leaves on top of this giant iron farm? And so this makes it look more like it's kind of a, a shrubbery, shrubbery wall or something intentional. So if we look at this thing from below, it is starting to look really, really nice. Oh, oh, I see a new farmer villager in there. That is awesome. So my original babies, they have all grown up. Uh, let me sleep and then we'll start trying to roll their trades. So we know that these two front composters belong to the farmers that are already locked in. So let's see what he's offering. Wheat, we've already got wheat and wheat. Awesome, nice, nice variety Minecraft. So let's break these and we'll uh, just keep trying until we get beetroots and potatoes. Wait a minute, I think I already have potatoes. Let me double check. Yeah, I've got potatoes, so I need beetroot and carrots. There's carrots, awesome. 22 is not terrible. And beetroots, perfect. Uh, I did not bring anything to lock them in with, so let me go get a couple of emeralds and we'll lock those guys in. All right, so carrots is locked in and Let's see, where's our other one? Nope, your carrots. There's beetroots. Beetroots are locked in. I don't know why two desert villagers gave me your normal plains biome villagers. That That's kind of weird. But now as these all start to breed, some of them should end up being desert villagers. Some should end up being plains villagers. I, I don't know. So we are almost done up top now. Before I put in the water, I want to go ahead and put in the lava for the kill chamber uh, so that I'm not fighting against water that's trying to push me into the kill chamber. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to aim for the deep slate underneath the beds and we're going to put down three signs and then just put some more signs right in front of those. Just click on the sign and it's going to put a sign that's attached to that sign and we're going to do that all the way across. Nice thing about signs is they have no hitbox, and so you can put stuff on them, but entities will just fall right through them. So now we're going to put our lava on top of this, and I don't want to aim for the bed because you can waterlog bags, and so if I try to click on the bed, it's going to put the lava in the bed. So instead, I'm going to put the lava right there in the middle, and that will just spread out. It will cover the entire kill chamber, but it's not going to spread like outside of the kill chamber. Okay, now we can start putting the water in and we do need to be careful with this because the kill chamber is active. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over to this corner. I'm going to skip the block right here to avoid having the entire area fill in. I'm going to put, what? oh, right. These are stairs. <laughs> you can waterlog stairs. So don't click on the stair, click on the, uh, the floor below it. I'm going to put water there, skip one and put water there. I now have an infinite water source in between. And I'm just going to carry this water all the way across, stopping just before I get to the corner like I did on this side. Like so. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to skip the corner right there, go inside one block. Now that we've got all of the edges filled in, you can see it's stopping right before the lava. That is so cool. The water and the lava aren't touching. So this water is going to push all the golems that spawn up here right into the lava. They're going to slip right through, land on the hoppers. They're going to burn to death because their head's still going to be in the lava. They're going to drop that sweet, sweet iron. It'll get collected in the hoppers and go into the chest. 
So the last step up here, we do want to put water on top of these oak logs in the corners. So we'll put one there, come over and put one over here. And with that, the top is now complete, except I want to put some lanterns on the corners here. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go crazy with the lighting. I don't, nothing can spawn up here because of the leaves and the fences and everything, but I just think it looks nice. So I guess I should talk about why we haven't gotten any iron golems yet. On Bedrock Edition, the conditions to spawn an iron golem, they're so, so different than Java Edition. This is one of those farms that if you look up a video on how to make an iron uh, farm, if you watch a Java Edition video, it's going to be so different and it's not going to work at all on Bedrock. On Bedrock, you need 20 beds and at least 10 villagers and at least 75% of them have to be working. That will cause an iron golem to spawn. Since you have 20 beds, you might as well get 20 villagers, so then you have two sets of 10, which means that two iron golems will spawn. Uh, I think it's something like a 1 in 700 chance on every random game tick to spawn an iron golem, which turns out to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about every 30 seconds. So once we've got 10 adult villagers and they are working, then we should start seeing iron golems. Now that I've got my four farmer villagers, I can go ahead and start putting in some more workstations and uh, yeah, the, the, it'll meet the conditions to spawn the iron golems. I was just going to do compost bins, just 20 compost bins, because they're so easy to make. But I, I don't want 20 farmers running around and then I have to figure out which ones I locked in and what I want to keep. So I'm going to go make up some fletching tables. Oh boy, we've got illagers. This is, this is really bad now because with the villagers nearby, this is technically part of a village and we could trigger a raid. So I'm going to just kind of leave these guys alone. Hopefully they'll go off and just not bother me. All right, so I've got 16 flushing tables here. This will get me up to 20 workstations for 20 villagers. Um, these, the fletching tables, I just made these because they're super easy. Uh, I don't want 16 fletchers in this eventual village farm. So eventually I'll come replace these with some other workstation block. These are just super easy to make. So at this point, the iron farm is technically done. All that's left is to wait for the villagers to finish breeding and for them all to grow up and bind to workstations. And then we should start seeing some iron golems. Until then, I'm going to spend a little bit more time doing some decorating both inside and outside to really make this thing look nice and to make it a little bit more safe for the villagers inside so that they don't have to worry about any mobs coming up and bothering them. So I'm going to do a little cutscene of some decorating while we wait for time to pass. Okay, had a little bit of a scare there for a while. No golems were spawning, <laughs> even though I had plenty of working villagers. Uh, it was like two or three days past and no golems spawned. I was really getting worried, but I went up top, I uh, scooped up the lava to get rid of it, broke all the beds, replaced all the beds, washed the, all the villagers bind to all the beds, and things started working again. So I think at some point uh, something broke and the villagers weren't bounce with their beds anymore. So if you encountered that problem and nothing spawning, try just going up, replacing all the beds with new beds and see if that kicks it off again. But as you just saw, we had an iron golem drop down. He has died. I've gotten a couple of golems now. And so this thing is in full swing and it looks so good. Let me show you some of the decorations that I did. Uh, starting with the inside, I went ahead and put some lanterns up. Lighting is very, very important in here because it's got this giant roof to it that's going to be blocking daylight and it's a big open area. You do not want any spawns in here. Also put some slabs up here to just kind of make the inside look a little bit better since you have to have these uh, blocks surrounding it so that the villagers can't reach their beds. Um, yeah, it just, it kind of makes it look nice, I think. Yeah. Uh, I put this moat around it. This moat serves two purposes, really. One, I think it just looks really cool. <laughs> I think it's, uh, yeah, it, it's a nice little addition to this thing. But also, I guess three purposes. Um, zombies and drown and uh, mobs that spawn during the night. 
they can't reach the villagers now. Uh, like even if they get into the water and come over here, they can't get up onto the land to reach the villagers because I'm pretty sure that may have been what was going on with my villagers in season one is the zombies were able to reach them through the fences or the uh, glass panes or something. So this just creates a nice big barrier between the mobs and the villagers. But then also, uh, on the off chance that the game tries to spawn an iron golem just outside, like one block outside, if the center of this village isn't quite centered with the farm for whatever reason, this basically lowers the ground where the game could try to spawn an iron golem, and it lowers it below the, the spawn box. And so if it picks a point right outside the wall, the ground right below that now is too low for the iron golem to spawn. So this will prevent any spawns outside the base. Go away, nitwit. You're not needed here. So yeah, all that's left to do now is just let the, fin the villagers finish breeding up. We'll get 20 adult working villagers in here and then this farm will be complete. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to go ahead and just tell you that the uh, the next weekly episode, I'm going to be transforming this amazing build even further, turning it into a full-fledged villager trading post. That's right. I'm going to replace all of those Fletcher villagers with uh, librarians and clerics and armorsmiths and weaponsmiths and all kinds of different villagers that we can trade with and get lots of goodies. And it's going to look really, really nice. It's going to be super useful. This is something I wanted to do in season one, but I just never really got around to it because by the time I started doing stuff with villagers, I already had gear that was really, really good. So I just didn't really need to. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button. And while you're down there, uh, feel free to subscribe so you'll get notified of future episodes as they come out. Thanks, y'all, and have a great day.